Okay, for my debut episode of Rob Drinks Beer, we are in the exciting confines of the living space because, well, it's my birthday, and I finally bought a beer that I've been uh, thinking about for several months now, but I've been put off because of the price. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to show you a garage project touch wood. Just bring it around here. This is a garage project touch wood. It is a, if we get right in here, an elderflower and honey triple. And it is worth, I want you to prepare yourself for a shock, 20 bucks a bottle. That's nothing apparently garage project have for a lot of, uh, well, several beers that come out recently, specialty items that are about that much. But in any case, uh, we'll just pan around here again. As you can see, it is a very golden beer. It's probably the honey in it. In it. And it's uh, got a very... Oh, if I can give myself a bit of a nose. It smells like... It's got that uh, Belgian tint to it that triples have. I'm not particularly fond of it myself, but there you go. And... You can definitely taste the honey, and there's a very pungent flavour. I'm not sure if that's the Belgian yeast or the elderflower itself. The, it's a, a very sweet beer, but then triples generally are. Uh, this particular model is... Wow, 9%. Typical triple strength. So be very careful with that. So I'll stop recording now and let you know what I think of it later. I really don't know what to make of this beer. Um, I've been looking at the label and I realized that this is bottle 8,404 out of 8,500, so it's a bit late in the game. While drinking it, uh, it actually got cloudier and sweeter as time went on. The honey evidently settling towards the bottom of the bottle. Um, I don't know how easy this is going to be, but I'm going to bring this in here, and as you can see, there's a sort of, uh, I don't know, elder witch creature sprinkling uh, elder flowers, touch wood, complete with the, um, um, well, you can see there's a, a numbering system on it, and a B, and a big sticker that holds the paper on, and all that, very fancy. And it's limited edition, so I'm probably it's it's at least I've tried it. So there's a very big, you know, there's big honey tastes. There's um, uh, there's a sort of slightly woody edge that might be the elderflower, I think so, and a bitterness that is probably the actual Belgian triple base. But at the same time, you know, I've tried this, and okay. actually I think. Uh, the garage guys are working away on some new, very expensive, very limited edition beers. That's probably why they uh, pushed the price up a lot. But right now, and, and also, did I mention that this thing is 9% ABV, and you've got a 650ml bottle here. That's about to... The equivalent probably of two cans of their pernicious weed. Yeah, in fact, I'm sure of that because um, pernicious weed is 8% ABV or thereabouts, and a can is about 330-something mils. So I am feeling a bit tiddly. And besides, it's my birthday, so I'm going to follow up this uh, quite tasty, a bit challenging, but um, still a pretty damn good beer with... Um, Well, I would say Mangatinoka's finest, but I've been told that they're stopping to put the production of Tui at its hometown of Mangatinoka. Mangatinoka is going to become probably more of a short-range brewery, po possibly experimental. They're going to be moving the production of that uh, sort of Tui draft beer, canned beer, bottled beer, up, up to Auckland and down to Timaru. Probably understandable. 
but at the same time, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not, just not going to be the same. Walking through the uh, plant at uh, Manganoka, knowing that um, the uh, red-coated gold liquid is not available, but at the same time, you know, now we've got uh, Tui Lager. I think we used to have something called Tui Blonde. I don't know what happened to that. I'd like to see the black Tui again, please. Please, please, thank you very much. But um, in the meantime... A quite pleasant lager, 4% ABV, one of the staples of my student diet when I was at Victoria University. Yeah, it was like that. In any case, I've actually got to get, I, I've actually got to, change, got to get out of my trousers and replace them with something a bit more stylish and upmarket. It is my birthday today, you see, and I have to get Nice and some, something closely resembling presentable in order to uh, go out for dinner tonight. Salute. Okay, so that was um, on my birthday, late June, and uh, nearly two months later, I finally get on with this. So I might as well make it one of two parts. So what was that all about? Well, that was about the garage project Touch Wood, Elderflower and Honey Triple from the Garage Project up in Arrow Street, Wellington, New Zealand, represent and a fairly dangerous and expensive drop at $20 and 10% ABV. But enough of that. Um, I mean, okay, it's Wednesday, we really shouldn't be drinking on a Wednesday, but um, I've had a bit of an eventful day, so I'm going to do that. And what am I going to do? I'm going to uh, this thing. Now, here's this beauty shot, and here's the guts of it. This is a boundary road from Auckland. It's a stolen base IPA, a sort of a, a so what's it, what it calls itself, uh, an American Pale Ale, or American Double IPA actually. And it's by, as it say, it's by Boundary Road on Red Hill, Auckland, and Oh, it's a bit of a dangerous one. This thing is 8% ABV. This is not something that you'd um, scarf uh, half a dozen of in one night. Not that I speak from experience, but uh, this is something I'd sort of drink once and then think to myself, okay, let's, uh, let's have a, I don't know, something like a, a happy days or a two stoke or something. In any case, um, glass. My trusty bottle opening key ring. And that reminds me, I really do have to uh, get a half dozen or a dozen of uh, the Tui Golden Lager at some stage. I think I tried it once in the bar and uh, it was quite nice. Should do a formal tasting of it. Just like I've been meaning to do a formal tasting of this all. Hmm. Sort of, sort of fruity. Um, it's not overly grassy or anything like that. In fact, it's very... It sort of makes me think of... I don't know why, it makes me think of plums. I don't like plums. Anyway. So, here's a glass. Um, it's a very... It's a very rich colour, I'd say. Um, Definitely amber, going on slightly reddish. Now this could be because um, it's a very, it's very strong, or because the bolts used are relatively dark. But in any case, uh, let's see what it has to say for itself as I take my first, first step. Now one of the things that uh, Boundary Road do is they put the bitterness on it. So this thing here has 65 IBU. It's also using ale, caramba, and crystal malts. So that's probably where the colour comes from, the caramba. And for hops, we've got uh, Pacific Jade, Pacifica, Cascade, and something called Zithos, which actually sounds more like uh, some place of unspeakable horror in um, an H.P. Lovecraft story, I'm not entirely sure. It even tells you that the mash temperature was 63 degrees and it was boiled for 90 minutes. So you can really impress people, and they will think, my goodness, what an in 
intelligent and insightful young man. Mr. He really knows about beer when all you're doing is looking at the bloody label. So it's so we've got uh, smooth malts, citrus notes, and so-called super sized me hops, which we probably would need, particularly if it's uh, that strong. You need more hops to counterbalance the um, the alcohol content. Anyway, enough blither. Hmm. There is a sort of fruitiness there, and a bit of twang at the end, but it's very definitely an amber. Now, it's not as pungently malty and sharp as, say, the stoke amber, and if you can get a hold of a six-pack of stoke amber, you really, really should. I'm not joking. But this is a, a sweeter, and I think it's probably the alcohol that's uh, doing it. But, like I say, this stuff needs to be treated with respect, okay? Yeah. There is a citrus feel to it. Um, the closest comparison I can give is a somewhat overripe mandarin I ate in the past. Um, it might have been, actually been starting to ferment, it's hard to tell. But I ate, but I ate the blimmin' thing. Probably paid for it too. Anyway, let's see what happens when I get to the bottom of this bottle. I might be some time. Yeah, I just realised I'm uh, at the end of the stolen base. It doesn't feel aggressively alcoholic, despite the fact that it is 8% ABV. There's the equivalent here of um, three going on four twoies in that one bottle alone. But uh, hey, three, maybe four twoies in one bottle is better than the uh, Atlas crap that I drank uh, several months back after I just finished uh, doing a video playthrough of Infra. If you haven't played Infra, go to infragame.net. It's actually quite fascinating for a walking simulator. And there's another part coming. And surprisingly, I actually quite enjoyed myself. But anyway, getting back to this thing. As time has worn on, the sensation of drinking a, an overripe mandarin has faded. At least, that's my verdict of it. But this is still very much something that I would probably have one in one night. Um, particularly if I was uh, needing something... F Wanted to have something fancy and uh, and uh, maybe a bit uh, stronger than usual. It's got not so much a fruity taste. As I said before, it makes me think of plums. It's not exactly plum fashioned. There's a distinct, distinct amber taste from the um, the uh, what do they call it? The caramba hops in there. But other than that. The mixture, particularly the hoppiness of the IPA, is pretty much matched, maybe even slightly outmatched, by the alcohol content, because our, the, the ethanol tends to be somewhat sweetish. At 65 IBU, um, this is a fairly easy one to drink. In fact, the more I think about it in Tui, I think this is actually more of a... Um, Yeah, I think it's probably, it's more like a sort of super tui, I guess. It's probably not something that the Boundary Road people want to hear, but that's... What I think, mm. Yeah, as you get to the bottom of the bottle, um, the first hints of, the first hits of, uh, as I say, overripe mandarins, I'm going to keep using that term, um, get replaced by... Amber malt. Amber malt is in this thing prominently. And, as I say, this is a substance, a bottle of substance that um, I would have exactly one of. Um, if somebody pushed me, I mean, if I got two, that'd be uh, one one night and one another. I'm not entirely sure. 
In any case, that's uh, that's the Boundary Road stolen base for you. And the second half of the first episode of what might be an ongoing podcast, which we're going to call Robert Drinks Beer. I've actually got uh, a few other beers in the beers that I've drunk before and recorded, not done anything with. So I'll probably end up uh, going through those as I get along. Besides, I've got the bloody photographs, I might as well use them. Anyway, that's yours. I suppose it'll be time for tea soon. Salute.